David, welcome to the show. Welcome to the W2 Prison Break show. So happy to have you on, man. Thank you very much, Brian. I'm super pumped up and excited to be part of this. And hopefully we can give your listeners some tools and systems that they can use straight away to energize themselves, to feel better, to basically raise their vitality. No doubt. And I love your energy, especially at the hour that you're at. By the way, this is the first, <laughs> you are the first international guest on the W2 Prison Break show. Uh, folks, uh, David is in Sydney, Australia. It's, uh, what is it? You told me what time it was? Yeah, it's 6.30 in the morning. So it's not not too early. I'm, I'm an early rise myself anyway. I normally get up around three o'clock to get a lot of stuff done before most people are awake. Yeah, absolutely. Which is important. Maybe let's stay there a little bit. We're going to get into uh, your your coaching business and you got a lot of cool stuff to share. But what? how long have you been getting up that early? I, I, I would ask you. Yeah, I've always been an early riser. Even when I was at school, I'd get up around 4.35 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And that was really because like, I've always been a thick guy. I've never been the biggest guy, but I'd, I begged my parents for a gym set when I was very little. And we got our weight set and the best time for me to do it because I was so busy in the afternoon with sports, with homework, is to get my training done in the morning. So it's really been a lifestyle that I've had since I was like 13, 14, around that age, just getting up early and yeah, getting stuff done while other people are still sleeping. There's no distractions there. I agree. There's something about the morning where you really, it's just you and the darkness a lot of times mm. and, and, you know, you can get a lot done now. So what you're essentially saying is it's become a habit for you. Like just Very like much. sleeping in and going to bed late is a habit. You have created this habit of getting up early and getting to work right away. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And that's what it is with everything in life, whether it's with training, with business, with life in general, it's not, you don't make these big drastic changes overnight and expect them to stick. It's small little incremental changes day after day after day. And like you said, it becomes a habit. It becomes habitual. I get up without my alarm. It's like, I don't need an alarm. And people also go, but David, you only sleep for like five or six hours. But I also have a nap during the day as well, because for me, and speaking to many athletes and many high level performers in the corporate world as well, you know, you don't want that two, three, 4 p.m. slump. Mm -hmm. So having a 25 minute, you know, power nap, or I like to put on my headphones. I always have my headphones around with me. I put on guided meditation for anywhere from 20 to 25 minutes. And it really just pumps me up and gives me the energy to bring it home strong. That's a great, that's a great share because, you know, most people would think, Hey, five to six hours of sleep per night, you know, you'd be, you'd be dead by the afternoon time, you know, but you're clearly yeah. have enough energy to the point where, you know, you're like ready to jump through the screen here, which is super awesome. <laughs> For sure. Um, I love it. I mean, yeah, because getting up early with the training that I do with the nap during, during the day as well, like I said, it's only that 20, 25 minute because you don't want to get into the REM cycle. And I tell people as well, it's about the quality of sleep, not the quantity that you have. That's why when I'm talking to people and they go, I got 10 hours sleep and I'm still tired. I woke up like I've been run over by a bus. Whereas I get five or six hours sleep and I'm jumping out of my skin. So it's creating that quality of sleep over quantity. Yeah, I love that. And you you said something about the small incremental steps, which we're going to talk a lot mm. about today. And listen, folks, this is David, the first guy who said this, who's successful. Okay. Let's talk more on that because I think most of us think, and, and that's probably one of the reasons why we don't go after our dreams. We don't go after our goals is because mm. we have this bar so high and we just think we can't do it. And we think we've yeah. got to do it all tomorrow. Right. <laughs> Whereas that's not the case. It's small. So yeah. expand on that a little bit more uh, just to give context to the listeners. Yeah, very much so. Because like we were talking about beforehand, I'm a big Eric Thomas fan. I love listening to his stuff. And it was actually going and seeing an event of him, which was, was very last minute in Sydney. Mm -hmm. But because it was last minute, I bought a ticket for myself and my mate and my mate couldn't turn up until he was on. And I was watching these other speakers and you know, you sort of go, who am I to get up on there? What? I don't have a message. I don't have, 
you just, like you said, it's so far away. But then I, I went and I stepped outside of my comfort zone as well. One of the ladies that was on earlier in the day, she had a, a cardboard sheet in her hand and said, sometimes you have to take the first step. And because I was there by myself, I stood up and I walked to the front and she smiled and nodded her head and then gave me that that little envelope. And what that was, that was, it was um, a voucher to a three-day speaking boot camp. So it's because I got out of my comfort zone. I literally took that first step, but that still didn't open the door for me. What it did was it started just pointing me in the right direction. After that, I did a 12-month speaking course. And still, it was <clears throat> during that time where switches started to go on. And I started to move forward. Like we said, that little by little by little. I've been speaking now for seven years. And mm. people go, like, they, they think it happened overnight. But you don't hear about stuff the first six, the first six and a half, the first seven years even. And it's like they, this old saying, it takes a long time to become an overnight success because everything is done in the darkness. People don't care what you're doing until you make it big. So all of that stuff that's happening, it is building up millimeter by millimeter. Because you think about it, if you move 1% forward each day, which isn't much in the scheme of things, in 100 days, because of exponential growth, you haven't just come 100%. You've come 130, 140% because it's that building upon building, layer upon layer, in order to get to your goal. Such a great uh, share there, David. And it's the unseen hours is what you're referring to. Like nobody, mm. nobody's, nobody's watching you, you know, do what you do every day for that many yeah. years. Would you say, speaking for seven years, that you're, you're, you're maybe you're feeling that not that you've made it, but that you're really, really good at your craft or maybe maybe the vision that you had when you took that literal first step so mm -hmm. long ago, like you're finally there or do you are you are, do you still have more to go? No, I'm, I'm a long way from getting there. And no matter how big you get, like I spoke to before and as well, I'm looking at going over to the States in October and then early on next year as well mm -hmm. to hopefully get some speaking tours going. Yes, I'm very good at the craft because... It's practice, practice, refine, practice, practice, refine, perform, refine, and you're constantly moving forward each time. But there's no one is ever going to play the perfect game of football. No one's ever going to play the perfect game of golf. No one's ever going to do the perfect set with speaking. But it's just about keep on moving forward. No matter how big you get, no matter how good you get, you can't become complacent with, I've made it now. Yeah. Because when you get like that, you get overtaken and you get forgotten about. Because think about Michael Jordan, even when he was the best in the world. I'm not a basketball fan, but I'm a fan of greatness. And Michael Jordan's thing was to become so good that everyone, everyone, including the wives, the kids, wanted to see Michael Jordan play. He didn't get to the top and stop. He kept practicing harder, training harder than everyone around him. Yet even he couldn't keep that up forever. So it's just constantly moving forward. Yeah. So you're still looking to improve 1% every day. 100%. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. all about continuous, never ending improvement in everything you do. And that's with, like I spoke to you before about my five steps towards improved vitality. The fifth step on that is recap. And with that, what I do is I watch the video of my talk. How I watch it three times. One time, I just listen to it. The second time, I watch it without the audio. And then the third time, I watch it with both. Just to making sure that everything, my body language is correct. Can I understand what I'm talking about without hearing it? Is my tone correct? Do I understand the meaning that I get without seeing it? And then combining it and going, where can I improve? There's always room for improvement. That's really interesting that you, because I watch myself too on my podcasts and my shows and stuff, but I've never done it without the, without the sound turned off. I can, I, I see the value in that. I, I would mm. say, can you, why do you do that? Why do you, how, why do you watch with the sound turn off? Yeah, because when I'm speaking as well, up on a stage in front of 200, 300, a thousand people, mm -hmm. you know, it's 
you your body language conveys i think it's something like 70 percent of the message along with the tone not your actual words so is my body language congruent with my message because i talk about it all the time that emotion is led by emotion so the way that you sit the way that you stand the way that you move influences the way that you feel therefore the way that you act so if you sit slumpy like doing this podcast i see that you're standing up i'm standing up because that allows energy to flow through it's the same as with speaking is my body language congruent with what my message is can i understand what i'm conveying just by watching it god i love that all right so question for you david when you were you were at this eric thomas event right um yep. did you had had you had aspirations of being a speaker prior to going to that event or did it kind of just hit you right there yeah i never did because i as you mentioned before people think that they have you have to reach to the stars tomorrow mm -hmm. and i knew people like eric thomas les brown tony robbins all those sort of guys and i would just sit back in awe of what they did i go man imagine being up on that stage imagine feeling the energy from the crowd imagine being able to make that diff that amount of difference in the world so i never never even thought of myself as being up on that on the stage mm -hmm. because i thought i'm just david what do i have to share i'm an yeah i'm an athlete i, I snapped my arm arm wrestling i played rugby league for lower grades in south sydney i suffered two knee reconstructions with that and i'm a cage fighter what do I have to talk about? But then I looked at it and it was, as we've said before, it's that constant little bit moving forward, little bit moving forward and also getting coaches along the way. I wouldn't be able to do this by myself because it'd just be like getting dropped in the ocean where all around you is ocean and telling you to swim to the nearest island. You don't know what direction to go. Maybe there's an island just over the horizon. Yeah. And if someone told you about that, you'd be able to head in the right direction. But, I, you know, if you don't have a coach, you don't have direction. And with the people that I surrounded myself with as well, they didn't just point me in the right direction. They helped me build a boat, which is my five steps towards improved vitality. And then we got the engine going and we motored on towards that. So that's the importance of getting a coach, having mentors. And it's not all just to do with speaking. My wrestling coach has been the biggest influence in my life. Like, you know, eat more so than anyone else. Yeah, I love it. I love what you said about coaches too, because that was a, a huge uh, disconnect for me for so many years. Why I was stuck in my my job for so mm. long is because I refused to invest in myself and in, in coaching. I thought I knew it all. Yeah. And it wasn't until I did that when I left my job, which is mm. kind of ironic how that happens, right? But um, you've mentioned the five steps to vitality, the vitality five step system a few times. I definitely want to get to that. Now, this is a, uh, uh this is a, this has come from your speaking. Okay. You've sure. learned this, you've developed this from your speaking because you're talking to corporations yeah. and, and training and helping them. Um, so get into a little bit of that and you were showing me some cool stuff on your, on your whiteboard there in the back. And, uh, for those who are watching on YouTube, you get to see it for those who are not go to YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> certainly go to YouTube. Because, yeah, so this this is the model that I created through speaking, but it's from my life as an athlete, as a coach, and as a trainer. Because before I show it, because there's so many similarities between a sports team and a business team. We all have different positions requiring different skill sets and different mindsets. So that's like I, I explained before how a quarterback needs to have a different skill sets to a wide receiver, which needs different skill sets, different physique to a linebacker. Same as in work, you have the accountants. They they need to be good at figures. They don't need to be all bubbly like the front of house staff do. So this is all, you can use these steps in business, in sports, in your life, just to get up there in general, just to raise your vitality. Mm -hmm. So you'll see it's five steps here. The first one is snap, is creating, oh, just go around, is creating routines and rituals to snap into action. Like I've mentioned before already about the power of posture. So I love using posture, walking with power, passion, and purpose. 
I've already shown I have my headphones everywhere, utilizing the power of music. And those routines and rituals, as we mentioned before, it's doing those little things day after day, making it a habit. Because once you make it a habit, you just it just happens and you fire up when you're on your way to work so that once you walk into work, you're ready to snap into action. Like with fighting, I can't waste time before I snap into action before a fight or it can get knocked out. You, know, you have to be ready the moment you step into the cage or the ring. So that's those routines and rituals to snap into action. Then you go from snapping into action into napping the peak performance. And that that's where I mentioned things like putting my headphones on a guided meditation, having a lunch break, refueling your body and mind, even staying hydrated. Because in Western society, really, we're chronically dehydrated. So rehydrating, utilizing the Pomodoro technique, utilizing the Zinganic effect, but all these things that I've learned, but it's about napping the peak performance. Because, you know, with our mobile phones, we're all accessible 24-7, 365. Yeah. We need that time to rest, recover, recuperate. But then once you've had that nap, snap back into action. Then the next one goes to tap, knowing that it's okay to fail. So long as you fail fast, you fail forward, you tap and evolve. Especially what the world's been through the last two and a half, three years. This is a perfect time to experiment, to try things, to be an innovator or an early adapter. But be aware that there's times when you do have to tap, learn, grow and evolve. Then you snap back into action. Then we go down the chain and we have flat. It's all about celebrating. We do this all the time in sports, but very rarely in business. Celebrating the time, effort, and dedication that someone puts to their craft because it's all about bringing the team together. Because you may have heard the saying, and your listeners may have heard it, that a champion team will beat a team of champions. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is because you get the team that want to work for each other. I, had, I was in a good team with South Sydney. We weren't the best. We weren't the greatest. But because we built up those relationships, we won the competition. And that's against the other, other representative teams as well because we really wanted to do it for each other. And that's the same as in work. And then the last one is recap, which is all about continuous, never-ending improvement in everything we do with, with fighting. And it's basically what I said before. When I speak, I watch the talk i listen to it i watch it without sound and i listen to it and watch it at the same time what can i do better i don't just do that by myself i've got my workmates that we do it with we sit down and we're very critical but we're critical but we give ways how i can improve it so it's not just like throwing stuff at me going david that was rubbish david that, that was no good it's constructive so it's all about this constructive feedback as a coach I want problems, I need problems, but I also need solutions with it. Because yes, we're going to appreciate what worked, but by finding out what didn't work and how can we improve that? We're, we're gonna move the line forward. We're gonna move the line forward and upward to getting better and better. Then after the recap, we snap back into action. So whether it's for the next fight, the next game or the next project. So it's really about creating those routines and rituals to snap into action, doing power moves, changing your state so that you're ready at any given time. That's how I can get up at four, at three o'clock in the morning to perform at four o'clock. That's how I can perform at nine or 10 o'clock at night, utilizing this system. And it does increase morale, productivity and product um, profitability of the business. Mm. I love that. Um, first of all, folks who don't watch that on YouTube, I mean, he's literally has his uh, his his whiteboard here and he's showing it. So you got to see yeah. this because this is again the energy level is definitely there, which I love. And I I don't know. I'm gonna I'll ask you this in a minute. What you think the most important one is, and maybe there isn't, but I'm gonna ask you that anyways. But yeah. what I just took away from that as an entrepreneur, as a busy person, and as someone who is like all go all the time, can't sit still for five seconds. Mm -hmm. um, 
I really liked the nap part, which doesn't necessarily yeah. mean go to sleep, but it's like, Hey, you, you gotta, you gotta take it easy, man. You gotta take breaks or so other yeah. than the nap and the music, I love that. Uh, you mentioned other, what are some other things you said, the Pomodoro, which is, uh, the, you know, you, I think you're talking about the, uh, uh, the, is it the 80, 20? Yeah. No, or, it's where you work in short intense chunks. Right. Increments. Yeah. yeah. So Anything yeah, with else? that, it's, yeah, you set up a timer for 20, 25 minutes. Because when I'm speaking as well, I explain it, it's like a gym. When you go to a gym, you don't put 100 kilos on the bar and do squats or do bench press. Uh-huh. You start off with a small amount of weight. You still end up sore and sorry because you've stressed the muscle, the bones, the tendons, the ligaments. Like with work, you're stressing your mind out. Many people think that stress is a bad thing, but it's not. Stress is required for growth, but it's stress plus recovery is where the growth is and that's where just getting out getting some fresh air getting away from your computer even something as much as standing up physically turning away from your computer taking a big deep cleansing breath sometimes that's enough just to slow your thought process down just Mm. slow everything down so you don't make mistake after mistake after mistake and having that compound effect yeah you got to step away. Okay. I love that. Thank you for clarifying. So what would you say out of those five? I mean, if you had to pick, it would be the most critical one. Snap. Creating routines and rituals to snap into action. Because like I said, when I can speak and I've had to do that being in Sydney, Australia, um, I spoke over in, from Sydney, over in Paris. I had an event at midnight. I've uh, spoken over in the, in the States from here at eight o'clock at night, at four o'clock in the morning. So having those routines and rituals to snap into action. So you might wake up and feel a little bit groggy, but you do, yes, your power move. And then all of a sudden, you know, you have your energy. I put my headphones on and I move, I move. I listen to motivational stuff. I was listening to Eric Thomas just before we came on. And just before that, I listened to, to a couple of remixes that have been done that's really going through my head the red hot chili peppers remix i love it it just gets me going so usually for me snap is the most important i've had to do talk for as as short as like 10 or 15 minutes mm-hmm. i just spend it on creating routines and rituals to snap into action that's how important that one is yes you you need the nap so that you don't burn out but snapping into action is the that's why we keep going back to that all the time. Yeah. Cause you, you do have to go back. It's one thing to wake up early. Right. Uh, yeah. But then you, and then if you're taking breaks throughout the day, we normally fizzle out during the day. So that's like the, yeah. the snapping would be more, more challenging. I would, I would assume for those yeah. of us who are, who are not doing the right things. Um, 100%. Yeah. And that's why people hit that three, 4 PM slump where it's just like, boom. cause uh, what, what you'll find um, people tend to do is, and I ask people when I talk, I go, who had a lunch break? And it's surprising how many people don't have lunch break because they believe that they're going to be more productive by just working their way through lunch, having a coffee, having a high fat, high sugar donut and not get away from their computer the whole time. Whereas there's research that shows that we're so much more productive if we go for a walk, get some fresh air because that allows, and also get some food to refuel your body and mind. So that you don't get that 3 p.m. slump. You can motor, motor the way through. It's like playing a game of football or fighting or basketball or anything. It doesn't matter if you win the first half. Mm-hmm. If you get overtaken in the second half or the fourth quarter or even the last second and they score more points than you, they've won. So it's about keeping that energy going the whole game and going into the last bell. Mm. Yeah, there's so many good references to uh, sports and, you know, mm. your life and business. And you've obviously brought that into your, uh, your speaking and your coaching, mm. which is, which is just great. I mean, you found your voice for sure. Um, tell us about your podcast, David, the dynamic company culture podcast. I want to make sure the listeners check that out as well. Yeah, with that, that's all about getting leaders from from all around the world because I like getting them from different areas because different cultures do things differently, obviously. But what it is, it's about celebrating what works. What 
what do you do each and every day as a leader of a business to create a culture? Because it's not about individuals, because it doesn't matter how good an individual is, if there's a terrible culture, it becomes cancerous and it just spreads through. So I like to learn from people that have been there, done that. And I like to share with the audience as well. We learn about what works, but I also like learning about what didn't work because we all have obstacles in life. People think that Pete, the guys that are CEOs, CFOs, any of that C level, mm -hmm. they think that they got it all smooth sailing. Nobody has a smooth sailing in life. Or if you do, you don't appreciate it because you learn more from the knocks, from the bumps, from the bruises, from those obstacles that you have to overcome. And that's what I, I like to learn. So I learn, and you also see patterns that emerge. Like how leadership has changed so much from the 80s and 90s to now into the 2020s and beyond. It's constantly evolving. So we have to constantly be, be there moving with it. So it's more about not having their dictatorship, but working together as a team, coaching people. And that's where, like I said, we all have different positions, different skill sets, different mindsets. If you're the boss, manager, or supervisor, you're a coach or a trainer. Yeah. And there's so, there's so many differences from a coach to a boss because a boss tends to have that dictatorship. They have that, you do this, you do that. And that just doesn't work these days. Was a coach is all about elevating their team, giving them the skill sets, giving them the mindset, giving them the structure in order to perform their position as exceptionally well as possible. That's so good. I can tell you as a business owner, David, one of the biggest things that I've that I've learned, because I grew up in the, you know, the the 70s, 80s, and and 90s. And that was the culture, like the boss man with the mm. finger that you were pointing to everyone. Yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, it's like you do this and you know, I do that. And and you know, that's not that's not that that's not the world we live in anymore. And the biggest, the biggest um benefit I did to my team was to empower them, like to say, hey, like to give them yeah. these responsibilities yeah, okay. and make them part of the yeah. team. And it was like their their level of uh performance just went through the roof it was just mm. really and it's great to watch right because it's like well i don't i don't have to tell them yeah. what to do they know what to do yeah because that that empowers not just them but it also empowers you as their coach as their leader to concentrate on things that are going to move the needle more because if you're micromanaging if you're doing all this sort of stuff you either have the wrong people in the job or you don't trust the people because if you're micromanaging people well then you, you can't spend that time doing things that are going to help grow the business as a leader. And as a coach, we're there to grow our business. So if you're wasting eight hours a day, looking over people's shoulder, that's not helping anyone. But yeah, like you said, you also empower your workers and you'll find that they, they more often than not will raise to the challenge. And not just that, because you give them that autonomy, they're going to raise the bar again and again and again. So good. So good. All right. I, I have to ask a selfish question. Okay. Mm. My wife and I are watching rugby the other day. Yep. Actually we're watching women's rugby, which I didn't know existed. I thought it was awesome. Yeah. Like, this is pretty badass. Yeah. Very All much. right. So we have American foot. We have the NFL here, right? So what is the difference between rugby and also is it Australian rules football? Does that still exist? Uh, so what it is, is rugby union and rugby league. Ah. So yeah. they, they look very similar. But what you'll see with the main difference is, well, there's 15 players on Rugby Union. There's 13 on Rugby League. With Rugby League, once you get tackled, the play stops for a second while they get up and play the ball. The other team has to get back 10 metres. Whereas with, with Rugby Union, they have this thing called a ruck or a maul. And that's where when someone gets tackled, you'll see everyone create a scrum on top. Yeah. And that... What that is, you can really use that as a skill to get the other players in, tie them out. And if you bring five, six, seven of their forwards into the ruck or mall, that's going to give your backs more room to play um, play their, their game with their step, with their passes, and it really opens the game up. So there's, they're very, very similar to look at same shape ball. You tackle, you have to pass backwards. There's offside rules whereas with 
gridiron, you know, you can pass forward, you can pass backwards, you can pass sideways. But there's there's rules and the scrums in rugby union as well are brutal. In rugby league, they, they just sort of go there. And if you feed the ball into the scrum, 99% of the time you're going to win it. Whereas in rugby, you you can hear the contact of them coming together. Yeah. Yeah, it, it doesn't. It's not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. So, yeah. well, I thanks for going with that and going off topic there. <laughs> I just I said, hey, I want to take this opportunity here now. For sure, um, why not, David? You you mentioned you're coming to the states here um, this year. So, what do you what do you got going on? Tell us about what you got going on coming over here. Yeah, so it's working with the foundation, the B University. So it's not a hundred percent signed, sealed, and delivered yet. Mm-hmm. So in October, looking at going. Um, I'm partnering with B University. And what that is, that that's a university really to help uh, athletes, to help people that, and it's not just for college students, for anyone really, but to really raise above, to help with mental illness, to help with, you know, their questioning, with both their physicality and their mentality as well. So we're doing it from an outside perspective. I'm not there to teach calculus. I'm not there to you know, do all this other stuff. That's not what I do. Yeah. I'm there to raise the energy, raise the vitality, work on the mindset, work on the body because they work in harmony as well. Mm-hmm. So like, cause I know when I broke my arm, I mentioned to you, I think it was before we were recording, I snapped my arm doing arm wrestling and my arm went paralyzed for four months. Oh. I know how that injury affected me mentally because it's more than just a physicality behind it. And also playing rugby league, I played semi-professional. But as I said, I had two knee reconstructions, which put me out. So it's being aware of the stresses that these athletes, and not just athletes, but the uni students are all going through. And for them knowing that they're not going through it by themselves and to really open the door to ask for help. Where can they go? What can they do? So that that's all with B University. Excellent. I, I, I love that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure that'll work out uh, tremendously for you. You mentioned mind, the mind thing, uh, you know, mindset. We talk about that yeah. all the time, right? It's almost like an overused word, but it is super important mm. to be mentally strong. Like the mind is a muscle. I mean, it is a muscle. Oh, very much so. And my wrestling coach used to say brilliantly, because I like I'm not the biggest bloke going around. I'd fight at 65 kilos, which is 145 pounds or 150 pounds but i could take down guys that were a lot bigger because mentally i could get them in positions that were uncomfortable and he goes imagine if you have a ferrari and you have a mini minor going around a race course but you have a ferrari which is this powerful fast car but you have someone that doesn't know how to use it yeah they're, they're going to crash in the first corner whereas you get a skilled driver which is the mindset of that mini minor and more often than not, they're going to beat that Ferrari. Wow. I've not ha- ever heard it explained that way. It's always good to kind of, you know, articulate it in, in, in mm. a different way versus just saying, Hey, you need to work on your mindset. So, you know, you actually yeah, give a practical angles, advice yeah. there. Okay. Um, David, how do we, how do we get, how do we learn more about your five steps uh, towards improved vitality? Where can we go to learn more about yeah, that? So I, I do have, a website which is Phenom Leap, P H E N O M L E A P dot com dot A U. And you can also, there will also have my three pillars to high performance, where that's an online coaching course, where we've also got a corporate wing of that as well, where with a corporate wing, there's a few different levels. And it's all about with a corporate one, we're specializing in middle management because mm. the C levels have their own coaches, their own trainers. But the middle management, they get pressure from the top down and the bottom up. So we're strengthening them. We're giving them resilience and giving them these tools and systems to positively impact all of the ground stuff and also have influence on the way up. What they, what people can also do is get in contact through LinkedIn. I'm quite active on that. Mm-hmm. Or feel free to email me as well. It's David, D-A-V-I-D, at David Lindsay. L I N D S A Y dot com dot A U. Because if I can help one person, I'm a happy guy. And that's what I try and do, especially with the videos that I put up on LinkedIn, is to give people a little bit of advice, a little bit of confidence, 
and know that they're not doing it by themselves. And yeah. I'm, I'm happy to help people out wherever I can. And I believe that too. I mean, one of the, when we first interacted, by the way, that's Israeli email folks, he's emailed me. So uh, definitely yeah, reach yeah, out to him, but you that's sent me, me a video. You, he, he responded back with a video telling me about himself, which is, you know, people don't do that stuff, which mm. I, I thought was really cool. And I appreciated that. So thank you for doing that, David. Pleasure. Um, okay. So as we wrap up here, I mean, this has been tremendous. And again, the first international guest on the w oh, take it. show. I mean, that's, you know, that, that should make it. your day right there. Huh? <laughs> 100%. What would you, what advice would you give? Um, you know, we talked a little bit about the, the people listening to the show, you know, they're, they're, they're in this stuck position, right? They're in a situation yeah. similar to you, maybe when you were in that, in the audience, right? Yeah. What advice would you give to them as maybe a first step or, or, or something that they could do to maybe move a little bit further as you keep doing this ladder thing? Uh, what, what would yeah. you say to them? Yeah, so it's take that first step. That first step is the most daunting. And with, with Phantom Leap, we call it that because it's for a phenomenal lifestyle, you do need to leap. You don't walk into a phenomenal lifestyle, you don't run into it, but you leap into it. But what I suggest people to start off with is take that first step because in order to leap in something, you need to build up that momentum. And it starts off with walking. With you don't reach for the, the stars first up. Look at them and be inspired by them 100 percent Take tools and systems. Learn. If if you can, you get a coach, get a mentor. Just surround yourself with people that aren't going to pull you down. Surround yourself with people that are going to lift you up and help you get towards that end goal. And realize, I'm a, I'm a stubborn guy. I've always been stubborn in sports. I've always been stubborn in everything I do. Re realize that it's not going to happen overnight. Mm. Realize that even if you think it's going to be a 12-month journey, it might be four or five years. Like I said, I'm speaking seven years on, and it's now just really starting to flourish. And it's still going to keep moving up. You build momentum but it doesn't happen overnight. Keep plotting away and take those little incremental steps. Yeah, that's great advice. It does not happen overnight. It will not. Mm. Sometimes it does, but it, it's not going to. And, you know, hey, mm. if you could, if you had said, if you could say to me or someone, hey, in seven years, you'll have this result. Would you, are you willing to wait, yeah. right? I yeah. think the answer for Delayed most Delayed gratification. Yes. 100%. Yeah. David, yeah. you're the man. I appreciate it. I love the energy at 630 in the morning. So uh, <laughs> my pleasure, Brian. All right. I oh, love it. Thank you very much for having me on. Yeah. And I hope your listeners got something from it as well. And yeah, feel free to reach out and get in contact. I'm more than happy to help out. Yeah, no doubt they will. All right, everyone. Make it a great day.